Well, it's Tuesday. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and this week we're unboxing two, count them, two Bachman tank cars. Right. Now, if you've been following along on the channel, you know that we need a tank car about like we need a hole in the head. <laughs> Everybody needs a tank. Ah, we've already got a lot of tank cars on the railroad, but I've wanted to get a Gramps tank car. And uh, Al Kramer in Las Vegas, he sells things, uh, a lot of Bachman, a lot of large scale on eBay. And... Um, Let's get his actual name here. Arr! Here's that's hard to pronounce. Here's Arr! the one. Arr! And how do you spell that? How do you spell it? A R R. I need to put my new glasses on here. Oh. Albert Kramer, Rollies Wheels. Wow. Um, but he he sells really. I probably bumped the microphone and everything there. He sells really neat uh, Bachman product. It's the same Bachman product. He just sells it at really neat prices. Mm. And he, he made us an offer we couldn't refuse. That was a good offer. <laughs> and where I'd wanted a, a Bachman. And um, anyway, so let's let's break this guy open. Ooh. Here we go again. Here it is. It's the box. It's the box. So there's two in here. Wow. So that's what we ended up with. And the neat thing, if you buy two of these, you get two different road names. It's sealed up really well. They're actually sealed down the middle. It's not one box. It's it's two boxes. It's, the, it's both boxes oh, here. Oh, there you go. Is how Al has, uh, has sent this. Oh, well, there you are. So that's why it is the way it is. Right. Okay. We have plenty of band-aids on hand too. He also sells parts <laughs> if you're looking for wheels and any anything Bachman. And, and anything large scale in general, but especially anything Bachman. So we'll just crack one of these guys open. Ah. Leave the other one aside. Like Christmas. Ah. Something tells me you've got the side ones to do. There you go. Well. And it's always, it's my brother when we would wrap Christmas presents, he'd always put things in a box, in a box, in a box. Bachman does the same thing. Ah, and my mom, it was just the tape thing. She taped everything very well. So uh, now we need to find some way to extra, extra, not extradite. That would be a criminal process. We need to get it out of the box. Okay. <laughs> there so. <he> is. <laughs> And there's what it would look like uh, on the shelf at your hobby shop, should you buy one of these. Right. And, uh... Does it have an opener? Oh, it does. That's cool. That is really neat. Oh, it has the paperwork and everything. Yeah, all these Bachmans come with, with really good documentation nice. and so on. Let's uh, see if we can break these. these it's sealed in there ah. very well. They don't want you in there. They really don't. No. It's the adult proof packaging. Any children present to help him open this. Oh. Uh, kid will okay. be in there in two seconds. There it is. <laughs> We're getting closer. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, man. Gramps. One of the really interesting things about large-scale cars is uh, Bachman makes a, a frameless, and uh, uh, AccuCraft makes a, a framed tank car. Anyway, there's like three different prototypes that are available uh, without going over to the... Um, the Bachman Big Hauler. They they make a Bachman Big Hauler. It's not. It's it's not good. It's okay, but it's not good. But just sticking with the the really good tank cars, there's still three different prototypes that you can get. God.
Did they put the packaging? They build it around the model, and I think. We've got a a, par, a part on the a loose. journal box lid on the loose. Oh and, no! And uh, some spare couplers. I think they give you couplers in two different sizes, uh, depending. Oop, there's and there's another spare journal box journal lid box that's lid. on the loose. Mm. Those will have to be reinstalled. Nice. Look but at there that. It is. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Now, is that weathering on there that I'm seeing? No, shouldn't be. Well, they, kind of yeah, they've, they've kind of done a little weathering bit. on the walkways. They've tried yeah. to make them look like they're like weathered they're slightly. Weathered It'd be a shame to weather that one too much, though. My goodness. Gramps. Gramps. Now, you see this around, this, this Gramps tank car. Um, it was a fairly common tank car on uh, the Rio Grande narrow gauge toward the end of the railroad. Um, <laughs> look at that. See, it a opens removable up. lid. Well, isn't it? I was thinking And you've I'd got removable those. journal box cover. In theory, they're only supposed to open, not right. pop off like that. Well, two of them. You know, most grandpas have a railroad. That's why I thought when it said Gramps, every time we saw it on a model railroad, well, it was Grandpa's I mean, Railroad. I thought it meant something like the great, you know, Riley. I don't, what? It just, I, but it, no, it means Gramps. So Grandpa did have a railroad. Grandpa did have a railroad, and I didn't. I didn't realize this, but all of these tank cars belonged to uh, the Union Tank Car Company. Okay. And almost all tank cars today belong to the Union Tank Car Company, and then they lease those back to the railroads and to different companies, and that, and then they can do the maintenance because there's a certain trick to maintaining tank cars. I would think so. So. Um, there used to be a lot of oil on the Denver and Rio Grande Western that would come up the Farmington branch mm. to Durango and then over the railroad to Alamosa and then it would be switched at Alamosa to standard gauge cars and then sent to Salt Lake City for refining. Wow. But as the oil sort of petered out and whatnot, the last of the oil fields was there right by Chama. Oh. Um, just up the mountains from Chama, and uh, they had set up a, a gravity feed siphon over the mountain to get the oil to Chama, and there was an oil loading dock at Chama, hmm. and they they would load that oil into these tank cars, and there were uh, the, they had unit trains of eleven cars, wow. and so eleven cars a day would travel from Chama to uh, Alamosa, and at Alamosa, they would be switched out again to standard gauge cars. Hmm. Oh, no, I'm, I take it back. They would be processed right at Alamosa, my oh, mistake okay. there. Huh. Um, the guy that owned this oil company, he owned the oil fields and the refinery at Alamosa was um, Hughes, um, um, Lafayette. Lafayette. Lafayette Hughes. Hughes. Okay, and I must have had a lot of money. He had his own oil refinery and everything. Yeah, I would but think But what so. he had was grandkids. Well, that's wonderful. And so uh, the, the nickname for him there in Alamosa was Gramps. Everyone called him Gramps because they're not going to call him Lafayette. It just no. sounds silly. <laughs> Gramps. So Gramps, and then he said he painted this on it. These cars didn't belong to him. They belonged to Union Tank Car, and they still have the Union Tank emblems, oh my but gosh. he stenciled onto the sides of all of them Gramps, and he said he did it so his grandkids would know <laughs> which were his tank that's cars. That's a fun grandpa. Isn't that a fun oh, that's grandpa? Just... So now that's a, that's, when you say your grandpa has a model railroad, Oh. but a lot of people model these just because it was the last uh, oil tank car running on the Rio Grande, and then... <laughs> um, Lafayette's oil refinery burned down in 1964 mm. and was deemed unsalvageable and no point rebuilding it. And so they just closed the whole operation down. And actually, that was kind of a death knell to the entire narrow gauge line through oh there. Um, they went to only operating through the summers from that point. And then in 1968, they said they were going to abandon the whole line. And mm. fortunately, New Mexico and Colorado took over the section from um, Chama to Antonito. Really? 
and then um, the Rio Grande continued to operate in the section from Durango to Silverton, and eventually they sold that to uh, Bradshaw, who continued to operate it as the Durango Silverton. So those two lines are, are wow, still in still operation. There. Wow! And what's really neat, these tank cars, um, after the fire in '64. Union Tank Car sent all of these off to Alaska, to the uh, the White Pass Railroad in Alaska, where they eventually went out of use and they were sitting up there moldering. And oh my. anyway, the friends of the uh, Cumbers and Toltec managed to get six of these. Oh really? And they've taken them back to Chama, and some years ago they restored them and they've repainted them Gramps. Gramps. And they oh have fixed goodness. up the Gramps uh, loading platform at Chama. And you'll see these things spotted at the platform, and they'll cut them into trains, and they do special things. They don't haul any oil with them anymore. It, it, it really has become Gramps' model Gramps railroad. Gramps' model railroad. <laughs> and then one of these, I think, ended up um, on the Sumter Valley, and one of them ended up uh, at the Colorado Railroad Museum, oh. I think. And so there's, I think there's eight of them that have found their way back from Alaska. But the neat, the neat six are painted Gramps. So a lot of people model that because, again, the, the favorite era for the Colorado narrow gauge is the late 50s, early 60s, <clears throat> the very end of the Rio Grande, the very end of the narrow gauge. And, um, and this was a common sight, the Gramps tank cars. Well, I knew I had to have a grandpa in there somewhere. <laughs> and so uh, even though we've got too many tank cars on the railroad as is, mm -hmm. I wanted to get a Gramps. And then uh, uh, Al Kramer had uh, a bunch of these at a really good price. And it was like, you know, I can't say no. Mm -mm. And cheaper by the two. So, right. uh, so we bought two. And now we've got two of these with different numbers on them and so on. <laughs> And that's neat. That is awesome. That's Gramps. neat. So you now, had a Gramps when you were growing up. I always called Gramps Gramps. Yeah. No other name. Oh, there you well, go. he wouldn't go by his regular name, William Samuel. Ooh. He said, "You call me that, and I'll hit you." you know? Oh so no! Everyone called him Gramps. Gramps. Everyone called him. We called that's him Gramps. Awesome. Everyone took took to calling him Gramps he because Gramps. he didn't like being called William. There you go. His sister called him Bill, and and he'd let her get away with it. But I digress. <laughs> Well, <laughs> if you haven't been over to the channel, please pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. subscribe. And you can do that with the blue button. Are mm -hmm. we ready for it? <laughs> Zoink! Right there in the blue button. So we're not sure how you found this very interesting uh, movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Sunday as we do some significant screwing around. We'll see you. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye. -bye.